on the house. Um, but first, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Would you like to reduce your utility bill by about 75%? Or oh, yes. Or would you like to live in the warmth of a fire heated home that um, doesn't smell and you don't have to do the work of a fireplace or a wood stove? Not pretty good. Well, if your answer is maybe or <coughs> yes, then you're in for a big treat today. Why am I up here telling you about how to build a solar home? It's because I did one. I designed and built my own solar home. I'm not an architect, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a contractor, I'm not a builder, I'm a regular person. So, <clears throat> what am I going to tell you for this whole talk? It's really the simple basics of building a solar home. There was a lady over at my house one day, and she said, no, you cannot call it the simple basics of the solar home. I said, why not? And she said, what you've got to call it is removing the fear of solar. And I thought, what is she talking about, the fear? I didn't understand any fear. So if you're sitting out there, if you're listening to this talk, and you have any fear of building with solar, I hope I dispel all of that fear. But you can use this to build a home, a business, uh, to heat a shed, to retrofit your house. You can do any of those kind of things, and it works just really well. But first, you might be asking me, why in the world would you want to build a solar home? You know in the wintertime when you've gone uptown, you've done your shopping, you get back in your car, the sun's been out, the car is good and toasty and warm? Why wouldn't I want to use that same kind of warmth in my house? And do you know that that warmth is free? Really simple, right? How did I get started in all of this? Well, in the beginning, I knew years ago that I wanted to build a retirement cabin. So I began getting ideas, putting them in a file folder, kept keeping those ideas. Then when I retired several years ago, I pulled that old folder out and said, now's the time, i got to get started with this one. One of those ideas, of course, was solar. So one of the first things I did is I took a how to design and build a solar home workshop. In my state of North Carolina, we have a solar center. They give workshops, they give out materials, a lot of it is free, so I took one of their workshops, a two-day workshop. And I learned one thing was that I already had a lot of the skills and a lot of the knowledge of building solar. I didn't know I had it, but I did. The next thing I needed to do was find land, and I wanted land that would give me a southern exposure. I'll tell you more about why that's important in just a minute. Well, another thing I needed to do was find some plans for a house. I kept looking in magazines, I'd look at blueprints, I couldn't find anything that I really wanted, and I was asking people a lot, um, I want to be able to sell a retirement cabin. They said, solar cabin, what in the world are you doing? I said, it's not that difficult. They said, well, would it look weird? I said, well, no. So I built this little model. Kept looking for house plans, and looked and looked and looked. Could not find anything I liked. So I bought a computer program and designed my own. Now this is not blueprint quality, but it's okay. I gave my plans to a blueprint guy later and he drew it, you know, perfectly. But what I did is measured all my furniture, you can see my furniture in there, and I drew the plans out. I went a very, very simple, small solar house. You see how big that one is? 1,600 feet, good and small. I also needed a contractor. So I called a man who had done some renovation of old houses with me, and I said, would you build me a retirement cabin? He said, Madeline, I'll build you anything. That would be fine. So I began explaining what I'd like to have, a small house, a solar house. I got to that word solar, and he said, stop right there, Madeline. I said, what's wrong? He said, I can't build you a solar house. And I said, why not? You can build houses. He said, yeah, but not solar. I don't know anything about solar. I said, if you'll be the house, build a house, I'll tell you what the solar part is. He said, I don't know about this. <laughs> Two weeks later, he called me back up on the phone. He said, Natalie, there's nothing to build in solar. And I said, well, how'd you find that out? He said, no. I've been doing my homework on the internet for two weeks. <laughs> he said, it's simple. There's no big deal for building solar. And I said, you're right, absolutely not. So I said, that means you're with me on this project? He said, yeah, let's do it. So, off we went. 
Now, how do you take any kind of blueprint, or of my own, in fact, and then build in the solar? So what is solar? Is it really complicated? No. There's two basic concepts of solar. One of it is you keep the sun, you know, allow the sun in in the wintertime because you want the heat. And the second is you keep the sun out in the summertime. Simple. <coughs> now, how did I incorporate that into my little plans? Well, let's find out. Number one, how did I allow the sun in in the wintertime? Well, you'll see one thing. I have a lot of windows. Now, this is my southern exposure. Why is the southern exposure important? Well, do you remember being in the third grade? In the third grade, you study the solar system, if you're from this state, and you learn that the Earth goes around the sun, you learn that our Earth wobbles a little bit on its axis. Do you remember that piece? Well, that wobble becomes important for building the solar because in the wintertime, that sun is low in the sky, and so it comes in the windows that you have and will heat up the whole house. Now, most people, if not everybody, has some solar. If you have windows in your house, you've got solar. The difference with me is, I not only wanted to use the sun to heat my house, or the big break room in this case, I wanted that sun to be captured, and then I wanted to heat, it, heat my house at night as well. And that's another trick. You'll see in here that the sun is hitting my floor. Can you see that? If I get out of the way here. Uh, if you let the sun hit anything mortar about four hours a day, then it will heat that mortar up. Mortar can be anything from brick to cement to tile to porcelain, nice porcelain to slate. It's just anything mortar. For a good four hours, it will heat that mortar or call it, it's called a solar base. And then that will be your heat at night until about four or five o'clock in the morning when all that heat is dissipated. And then at that time, my backup system will come in. But first, I want you to look at those windows. Do you see how many windows I've got there? Those windows are regular double pane windows because I want the heat of the sun to come through. So at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, my backup system, which is radiant heat, comes in, and then that heats my house until the sun comes back up. Radiant heat. What if I have two or three days of no sun? No problem, my backup system heats the house just like it would heat your house or anybody else's house. No big deal. The south side windows are regular. What about the windows on the rest of my house? Well, those are low emissive windows, low E windows, and that doesn't allow too much of the warm air to get in or out. Windows. How many windows do I need to heat a house of so many square feet? And that's pretty easy. All you need is to calculate 7 to 12% of your total square feet and then put that into your windows. Now you see mine here, or go down all, go all the way down my south side, but that mine is really, I, I guess it's about 9% of my total square feet. So it's really quite warm when I do this one. There's another thing you do, you can do, though it's not necessary, and that is blanket the windows. How do you like that term? Blanket the windows. I use shades, I didn't use blankets. You can use curtains, you can use anything. And what that does, it holds in all of those little warm molecules. Do you remember science class in high school? You learned about atoms and molecules. They form atoms form molecules, and when they get warm, they, they become very active and they float all around the place. Well, if I can keep them into the house and they don't go back out those windows at night, I can harness more of them. But I also want those little warm molecules to float all over my house. So what did I do? Well, I did not build my walls to the ceiling because I wanted those molecules to be able to float all over it and, and have space to do so. There's many ways you can do that. This is how I do it. And it works. My whole house stays good and toasty warm. Those molecules circulate. Now, what about other, another form of circulation? What I also did is I put windows or doors <coughs> on all sides of my house so that any time I need to, I can open up those windows and doors and let the air in and out. I also built in an attic fan. There are 
our sun days. And I don't know if you can see in this shot, but can you see the color of the trees on the outside? It was late fall, early winter this past year. It was cold outside. I had been out all day. Came in, the house had been closed. So it was so hot in there, I had to open the doors in, the, in December, in late November, and cool the house down. It works. It really works well. There's another trick I want to share with you as well, and that is you don't plant trees too near on your south side because you want them, don't want them to block the sun in the wintertime. Now you can do that very easily with the Pythagorean theorem. You remember that from high school math classes? All you have to do is enter in the formula the how tall your tree is going to grow at maturity. And maybe an angle, you already know one angle because that's the right angle in there. Multiply that thing out and it'll tell you how far away that shadow is going to be at maturity because you don't want it to hit your house. I did mine and planted my trees away from the house. So if you don't want to do that, one of the things you can do is just simply plant your trees at least 50 feet away from the house and more than likely you're going to be okay. What I've told you so far is how do I allow that sun into my house? Well, here's the other trick. How do you keep it out in the summertime? Well, that same solar southern, <coughs> southern exposure helps me heal. Remember the sun is low in the sky in the wintertime because of that wobble, but in the summertime it's way up high. Now, it's not right over my house because I don't live on the equator. So it's at an angle, but the southern exposure allows me to use the sun's position to keep most of it out in the summertime. How do I keep the rest of it out? <coughs> I use some overhangs. Well, how, how big, how large do my over, overhangs need to be in order to shade the rest of that sun? <coughs> Well, that's another very, very simple formula, and all you have to do is drop in the latitude of where you're building. I'm in North Carolina, I dropped in at 35.8, and it told me that that's what I needed to do, build my overhang at two and a half feet. I did, and it works. I thought you'd like to see both winter and summer. So if you can see in these shots, in the wintertime, on the left-hand side, you see how the sun floods in those windows, and it actually crawls up the walls on the other side at times. But on the right side, you can see a summer shot. If, can you see outside those windows that the sun is shining brightly? But inside the house, there's no sun. There's reflection, but there's no sun. Now, not only is the sun hot, but the sun is also bright. And I decided to do one more thing too, and that is to add solar tubes on the north side of the house. My windows are on the south side. The north side, you don't put many windows because what you want, you don't want the northern, the northern cold breezes to come in through your house door. So it seems to be darker. So I put solar tubes in. These are 10 inch tubes. Um, very easy to put in, and you can see the before and after shots there. So before the solar tube, I would probably have to turn on some lights in the daytime, and uh, after the solar tube, I don't have to. So no electricity that I use on the dark side of my house at all. So it really works well. Now everything that I've told you so far is passive solar. That means there's no moving parts, there's no motor, there's no electricity, there's no fans, there's no pumps, there's nothing that I need. All I do is just position things where I can use the sun. But I decided to do an active part as well. I decided to put into my house something that y'all probably pay for, and that is heating your hot water. I decided to let the sun also heat my hot water. And here basically is my, my, my system, where I have a panel on the roof connected by conduits or pipes to a hot water tank in the basement. That's not a hot water heater. There's no heating element in it. Hot water tank in the best basement. And through those coils is a glycol mix, which is kind of antifreeze, that gets hotter in the sun than it does water. And it circulates by a pump. There's my active soil. And it circulates up to the roof and back down and heaps up my water in that hot water tank. Now, that Hot water system also heats the water that goes through my radiant tubes in the floor. So, another little nice piece. Now, 
How much sun do I get? 70% of the daylight hours in my state is sunny. If you want to see it another way, that would mean all day long, 60% of the days in North Carolina are sunny, maybe a few clouds, but basically sunny. And in the summertime, there's a little bit more sun. In the wintertime, a little bit less, 53% in the wintertime. So more than half of my uh, heating bill, more necessary to say it that way, most, more than half of my energy source is from the sun. And it just really works well. How well? Here is a chart showing an entire year of my electricity. And you see it from January all the way through December on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I simply charted my kilowatt hours. And you can see that in the wintertime, I use less electricity because of the sun. In the summertime, and in my state, August or September are the hottest months. And I don't want to be uncomfortable, so I have a heat pump that gives me air conditioning and that heat pump is electric. So how does this translate into money? Uh, no. In the wintertime, less than $30 will give me all the electricity I need to heat and, and use electricity for anything in the house. But in the summertime, I use four times as much money. I have a question for you. How much of your utility bill is, do you use to pay for heating your house, for cooling your house, and for heating your hot water. Here is the chart, if I can get it to move. Here is the chart for the whole United States of about how much of our energy bill goes for heating, cooling, heating hot water, and then everything else that we pay for. And note it is, what, 29% for heating the house, 17% for cooling the house, 14% for heating hot water, and of those three biggies, Two of those three are done by the sun, and I get the sun's help, so it's really great. Is a fear of doing solar meaning the house has got to look really weird or funny? Well, you've seen pictures of my house so far, but you can see how simple it really is. It's not an unusual looking house. Is there a fear of contractors? You shouldn't have as much fear with that because they're trained really, really well to it. Now, what do I think about how innovative this idea is? Well, it really isn't innovative. The Greeks and the Romans were building solar homes as early as 400 BCE, before the Christian era. Is it uh, a new idea? No. Is it innovative? It shouldn't be in the 21st century, but it appears to be. But what I do it, is it, was it hard to do? Now, I guess I could say, I used third grade study of the solar system. I used high school math, <laughs> chemistry. Would I do it again? Absolutely, I would. Was it worth it? Yes. Should you do it as well? Absolutely. I want to close with this thought. In the wintertime, when it's really, really cold, the weather forecast says it's going to be a chilly day. The sun will be out, but you won't know it. And I will sit back and grin in my house and say, yes, I will. I will be so warm in my house, I'll probably have to open the doors, open the windows, cool the house down. Now, if I did this, can you? Absolutely. Thanks for listening, and good luck.